Hey guys, uh, I want to thank you for joining me here today. Um, we're going to be working through adding a outlet to an existing outlet. In this case, adding to this outlet on the other side of the wall in the bedroom so that we can hang a TV on the wall. Uh, so right from the start, if you guys, um, if it's your first time here, welcome to the group. We're going to be uh, doing a bunch of DIY stuff. Uh, you know, a bunch of quick fixes for things. Uh, we build things, we fix things, we add to things, that sort of thing. In addition to a couple other things that we get excited about. Uh, if it's your first time here, you know, consider, um, you know, slapping that subscribe button. Uh, it should be down in the corner over there. And then uh, make sure you throw a like, like on the video, just so that I know that it's something you guys are looking forward to or looking looking for, and then I can go ahead and make more, more videos like this. So I want to get started. I want to throw a little um, disclaimer in here. I am not an electrician by any means uh, in the state that I live in. You do not need to be an electrician in order to add an outlet to an existing outlet there, but you want to make sure and check your codes so that you're doing this properly. In addition, I also have familiarity with electrical uh, codes and also with electrical process. Um, my father having done a lot of electrical work in, in the past and myself as well. So if you are not familiar with electrical work, you're going to want to talk to somebody who is. And then if you have any questions or concerns throughout the process, or if anything seems a little off, don't hesitate to reach out to an electrician. Any electrician can definitely do this process too. But I wanted to let you know that with a little, a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of work, you can also do it. And it, it's, uh, it's pretty simple and it's pretty straightforward. So I wanted to get this out there to you and, We'll kind of go from there. So what I'm going to do first off, first and foremost, and I'm going to tell you again when I get down there, you want to make sure and turn off the power to the outlet that you're going to work on. Um, it's 120 volts, so it's it's something that will definitely shock you if you do not turn off power to it. So you want to make sure and avoid that at all costs. Just like any electrical work that you're doing, I always recommend you obviously turn off the power to it before you do anything with it. And then from there, um, I'll show you how to turn off the fuse, which you guys are probably familiar with already, at least in the fuse panel that I have. Uh, it's a little bit more of a modern fuse panel, so if you guys are working in an old system, you may have bus fuses were a little bit different, but you can turn off those as well. So you want to make sure and turn off the power to it, and then we'll jump right into it. So we'll head downstairs, I'll show you how to turn off that power, and then we'll go from there. So hey everybody, um, like I said, we're down in the basement. This is where my electrical panel is. Um, always want to turn off that power, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. It's worth the trip downstairs for sure to avoid the shock. So. Um, we have everything set up ready to go upstairs. We just need to turn off the power on here before we end up uh, jumping into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you how to do that part. So this is my fuse panel, as you can kind of see here. It is um, a standard fuse panel with the house, obviously. Um, everything is kind of in there detailed as far as the outlet goes, the, uh, the fuse sizes, and then in addition to that, everything is labeled as you can kind of see here. So I'm gonna be going into my loft area. So when I look at it up onto this particular part, I can see that the loft is number 21. So then I'll come over to here and I'll find number 21. It's a little hard to see in the camera, but that is 21 right there. And then I will turn the fuse off. It is off now that I know that I don't have power up there. When I go upstairs, I'm gonna check it just to be sure. Like I said though, uh, it makes it kind of dark up there. So I'm only for illustration purposes showing you that this is off fuses back on. Now that I know when I go there, I'm going to have power into it. So I want to be careful on that side. I'll just close this up. And then once we're done, we'll turn it back on and we'll be good to go. So like I was telling you downstairs, what you want to do first is turn the power off. You want to make sure that there's no power to it so you don't risk electrocuting yourself. Um, I use a voltage tester. Now this is a simple one. It's a very basic voltage tester. It's going to tell me First off, if there's power to the outlet, and then on top of that, how much power is to the outlet. It's got four settings on it, but basically you stick it in, it tells you if anything's coming through and whether or not it's safe to work on. Now, like I said downstairs, I turned off the uh, fuse breaker to this particular space, but then I turned it back on because it gets pretty dark in here if you don't have any power to it. So when I plug this in, I will have power to it, but I want to let you know that you want to make sure and turn it off before you go after the outlet. So if you look at this, and I'll try to zoom in a little bit. You stick this into the outlet, and you notice that that lights up. You see that light up at the bottom? That shows you that this outlet has power. Now, before we do anything to the outlet, I wanna let you know that you wanna turn the power off again. I'm gonna emphasize this a couple of different times to make sure that you don't electrocute yourself. So. I want to go over the basics of the tools that I needed to do this, where I, why I chose this particular outlet to tap into, and then um, kind of give you a rundown of what I did there. So the main 
thing that takes the most amount of time is fishing the line through the wall. Now there's no insulation between these rooms, so it's a clear stud channel between the two studs in the wall. So all you're really doing is pushing it up into the wall, the wire anyway, and then pulling it out through the hole on the other side. Now, to avoid you having to listen to me swearing all day as I try to push this through, I've decided to um, start here, I guess. The wire is already in the wall, but I'll kind of show you how I did it and we'll go from there. So I'm gonna go over the tools that I use, like I said, and then we'll jump right in. So hang on. So what you can see here is basically all the tools that I have laid out that I used to add this outlet to um, the existing outlet that's already there. So I'm just gonna kind of point them out. So this is the voltage tester that we just talked about. T tells me if I've got power running to the outlet. This is a stud finder. Uh, I bought all this stuff at Home Depot or Lowe's. Any of your box stores will sell it. It's a basic stud finder, but it, it'll tell me where the studs are. Now I know where they are in the wall just because they're 16 inches on center, which they should be. And I know where it is in relation to the outlet that's there so that I can measure off to the left or right of it. And I know that I've at least got the stud channel for it. These are wire strippers. Uh, you can use anything from a regular knife. This just makes it easier because it's set up by the gauge and it'll pull the wire off of it. Obviously, a standard mechanical pencil to mark where I want the outlet to go. These are needle nose pliers. Uh, they're just helpful in making loops and stuff like that in the wire and then pulling anything through as it goes. And then these are, they're called dikes, but they're actually um, just trimmers. I use them to cut the wire at the different lengths regular screwdriver. Now this particular screwdriver has the option to do both uh, Phillips and regular, which is kind of nice because you have both when you're pulling the outlet apart, you'll notice that you need both of them. A regular, this is a drywall saw, but this is intended to cut the hole in the wall for the box. This is a after install box. So basically you don't have to screw this into the studs. This box is designed to be put in after the drywall is already there. You cut the hole in it, you put it in place or push it in there. And then you're basically turning the screws and it pulls this in and then tightens it like that to the inside of the drywall. So you have a nice snug fit without having to cut a big, huge hole in there. And it's also got the ports in the back to send the wire through. And that's kind of what you see there. And then this is the wire that I use. Now this is a, sorry, it's a 14 gauge Romex wire. You'll see it's got three wires in there. The unsheathed wire is gonna be the ground wire. That's always gonna be the ground wire in this particular case. The black is gonna be the hot wire and the white is going to be the neutral. So you'll notice in the wall, and I know that I have, um, I looked downstairs when we saw the fuse, it's a 15 amp fuse. So you know, it's only going to be this particular wire versus like a 12 gauge wire or something like that. So this is uh, what we're using today. And in reality, you don't need a lot of it. You only need enough to um, run it through from where the outlet that you're tapping into to where you want to hang it. So in this case, on the other side of this wall, I'm gonna be hanging it about that high. So I need enough wire to run from there, straight up to the stud channel, to the new outlet location. So like I said, I went right on the other side of the wall and I'm planning on hanging a TV and this is my daughter's room. Um, you'll notice that I do have an outlet down there, down in the corner. Now I could have tapped it right into that and just run it straight up the channel. However, I'm trying to get this outlet to be in the middle of the room, which happens to be right there. Now, the only thing that I can do with an outlet to put it right there is run it from the outlet on the other side of the wall, which is the one that I was showing you. So I wanted to put it over here to make it in, make it on center for the space. And then it forced me to run it into that channel. So as you can see, I've got the outlet up there right now. And like I said, uh, I've already cut the hole in it. I've already put the outlet in and I've already hooked it up. So I wanted to basically kind of run down how I did it um, without having to show you so you don't have to watch me. Uh, fight the wire through there for about half an hour or anything like that. So like I said, you can kind of see in here, this box that I have here is one of those uh, after or after add boxes in that I don't have to have exposed studs in order to put it in there. I just have to cut a hole and that's what you can kind of see here. I cut a hole in the drywall for it. Now I know that the stud is right here using my stud finder, but also I took the uh, faceplate off the outlet on the other side of the wall and I knew that the stud was on this side. So I know I can run a run it straight up there and basically just punch a hole into where I want the location. I can draw a, a box on there with my mechanical pencil and then I just cut, cut the shape of the box, pop it in and then you use these screws right there to tighten the box in place and it gives a nice snug fit. 
It's kind of hard to see in this particular picture, but you can kind of see down there. And that's, I punched a hole inside the box or I pulled one of the tabs off, I should say. And that's where I pulled the wire through. Now, once you get it to the outlet, the wire itself, and you pull it through this side of the wall, it's basic wiring to get the outlet hooked up. Now, if you have, if you're familiar with electrical, that part of it shouldn't be an issue for you, even just a little bit. You can certainly Google how to uh, add an outlet or how to actually wire an outlet. It's gonna be a 15 amp, 120 volt outlet, just standard outlet. This is where I'm gonna be hanging a TV. So I wanted to make sure it was here. So that's the basic setup of the outlet itself. And then we'll go into, uh, you know, kind of some tips and tricks for running the wire. The, uh, the trickiest part about this, you know, in when I removed this faceplate, I knew that the stud was right there, like I said in the beginning. So then I have a stud channel that's gonna be 16 inches from here to about here. Um, the biggest trick in, in this is getting the wire to run up through. Now they do make a device, it's called a fish stick. It's basically an attachable, um, you know, it almost looks like tent poles. And when you put them together, it's a long kind of semi-flexible, um, you know, pipe thing. And what you can do is once you decide where you want your wire to come through, and in this case, uh, I was coming up from the bottom. So I punched this tab out right here and you just push it through from one side and pull it out with your pliers. Once you know that part of it in, the outlet that you're pulling from, you can punch that tab out and push the fish stick through from the bottom with your wire attached to it. You can tape your wire right to it. And then your fish stick will be able to run straight up through the wall. And then you can go to your hole in the wall on the other side, find your fish stick and pull it out. Like I said, you didn't need much wire, right? So this is enough wire to get up to where I need to go on the other side, enough wire to give me my fit, and then basically I'm just attaching it to one of the other terminals within this particular outlet. Now I knew that this outlet only had one thing running to it. It had wires coming in the bottom and then wires going out the top to the next, next one in the line. The, these particular outlets also have two ports on the backside that you can put wire, additional wires into. So you can attach, you can actually attach uh, the power coming in, going to the next one, and then two additional sockets into, or two additional outlets into it. So you wanna make sure that you're not overloading your fuse. So a 15 amp can run say 10, you know, between an outlet, a, a light switch, um, a light, you know, anything like that. So you wanna make sure you don't overload your fuse because you'll just end up uh, tripping the fuse every time you turn it on. So you wanna avoid that and make sure you're not running an outlet that's overloaded already. Uh, in this case, I knew that it wasn't, so it was okay. And then you're basically just attaching this to the uh, outlet that's here already, running it between the wall sending it out the other side, attaching your outlet on the other side, and then putting your outlet into there. And then you're taking your box, you're making it nice and tight, putting it in place. And then you put a faceplate on it and you're good to go. So I did this because I didn't want to have to do a lot of drywall repair. Didn't, you know, the reason why I use this box and anyway, I didn't want to do a lot of drywall repair. And then in addition to that, I wanted to be able to have an outlet, you know, quickly. I mean, outside of fate, you know, fighting the wire between the wall, because it is pretty rigid as you can kind of see. But as soon as it touches anything, it bends and it'll start to come down. Outside of fighting it through the wall, um, which was the longest part of this whole process, if you didn't have to do that part of it, you're looking at maybe a half an hour at the most. And that's really making sure that you have the right stud location, making sure you're using the right box. In this case like this, making sure that you're not, uh, you know, you've got the power where it needs to be, that sort of thing. And then checking your, uh, checking your circuit. So. Once all in all is done, you go back downstairs into your fuse panel, you turn the fuse back on, and then you've got uh, power to it. You can test it again with your voltage meter, plug it in there, take a look at it, make sure you're getting power to it, and then you're good to go. So um, uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you go ahead and snap that like button and you'll know to make more and more videos like this. Uh, if you have any questions, throw it down in the comments below, but, um, you know, with a little bit of help, a little bit of uh, a little bit of research, um, you guys can add and and do some uh, some minor electrical stuff. You should be good to go. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for staying with us here for a minute, and you guys stay safe out there.